But I appreciate you letting me do this video. The video's rolling. These videos end up on YouTube. You're okay with that. But what I want to demonstrate today is, is basically um, the ultrasound study demonstrating um, haploedema. You've had a headache going on for three weeks, right? And it's worse in the mornings, you mm -hmm. were saying. And your vision started getting blurry. So you went to see the ophthalmologist here. And the ophthalmologist said, wow, you got bilateral haploedema or swelling of the um, nerve in the eye. And uh, so they sent you down here and we're, we did a CT scan. The CT scan was normal. And so our working diagnosis so far is uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension uh, or pseudotumor cerebritis, the old name. The diagnosis is going to be dependent a little bit on doing a spinal tap and checking for increased pressure within the uh, central nervous system. Uh, without that spinal tap and without the increased pressure, it makes it a little bit more difficult to make the diagnosis. Do you have any questions of any kind? Okay, cool. Thank you so much. So when you're doing a ultrasound evaluation of the optic nerve sheath diameter, you are going to use a high frequency probe, the linear probe, um, and you can just apply a little thin layer of gel when you're evaluating the uh, posterior aspects of the eye. If you were evaluating the anterior chamber, you'd want to really heat the gel up, or if you're worried about a uh, if you were worried about a uh, globe rupture, you would want to heat the gel up to minimize the pressure that you place on the eye. And then you just hold the probe at the base, and you can anchor the probe with your fingers on the bridge of the patient's nose. I've got my fingers resting on the bridge of her nose to try to avoid applying too much pressure. Okay, so what we have here is the vitreous chamber right here. The lens and iris is up here. Down here you can see where the optic disc is actually bulging up into the vitreous chamber, consistent with papilledema. Retina, three millimeters back. Okay, so you start right at the retina, uh -huh. and then go three millimeters, three millimeters back, mm -hmm. and then that's when you're doing your transverse oh. measurement. Then, yep, it's just going to be one single transverse measurement. Right now, where the where your A is right in there, um, is that really at the top of the papilledema, or, or, or is that where exactly is this A? Yeah, so this A is going to be on the retina, not actually on the top of the uh, bulging disc. Oh, good. I'm yeah. glad I asked that. Yeah. So you're going to go three millimeters from the retina, or where the retina would be, right? You can follow that all the way around where the retina would be. This is just bulging disc right here. Mm -hmm. Three millimeters back because uh, previous studies have shown that's, that's where the best clarity is to actually measure the optic nerve sheath diameter. And previous studies have shown that greater than five millimeters pretty well correlates with elevated intracranial pressure. But these studies are done in neuro clinics and ophthalmology clinics uh, and not really in emergency department patients who have headaches. The emergency department studies are all done on trauma patients and you see a lot of the time there, the pressure, the optic nerve sheath diameter greater than six millimeters correlates with elevated intracranial pressure, usually from a mass lesion like subdural hematoma. So there's not a lot of studies on the emergency department headache patients. So we're uh, looking at some data right now in the chart review to try to see what's the best measurement. But obviously in this case, it's greater than six millimeters. It's concerning for elevated intracranial pressure. In addition, we see the bulging optic disc. So that's consistent with uh, papilledema. So this patient needs further evaluation for a reason as to why she has elevated intracranial pressure. All right, good, thanks. Now, are we gonna do the other eye or just one eye is cool? Um, you would normally do both eyes. Okay. In her case, she has a kind of a, a anatomical variant where her optic nerve she, her optic nerve kind of is serpiginous in appearance, so it's really hard to measure. So okay. This this one we can only do one side. Okay, good. We'll, we'll have her extend her legs out here in a minute. You can, you can see that coming right out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thirty-six. Okay. Forty-two. Three. Well, that's 
so you have this leveled out right there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's normal? Talk about 20 or less. Absolutely. So, so it's hanging in there about 41, four. going back up to 42. Okay, so yeah, this definitely is diagnostic. Mm -hmm. 